A big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. If you need a website or a domain, go to squarespace.com forward slash James for 10% off your first purchase. Folks, that looks serene, doesn't it? Jan Mayen. I can assure you it wasn't serene at all, but uh, you'll see that in a minute. Beautiful, but uh, yeah, not not serene. Just googling serene because I don't know that I'm using that word right. Serene is an amino acid. I'm certainly not spelling it right. Anyway, doesn't matter. What I'm going to do today is show you some of the footage and photos I got from Jan Mayen uh, on an unscheduled stop on our trip between Svalbard and Greenland a couple of weeks back. Basically, it's a volcanic island, an amazing formation of rock uh, in the middle of nowhere, basically. You've sort of got Greenland, Norway, Iceland to the south, and the North Pole to the north. I mean, I suppose everywhere's got the North Pole to the north, but uh, you know what I mean. Anyway, we got to go. I got some photos I quite like, so I thought I'd show you those in this video as I talk about something. I was gonna say boring. It's not boring, but I am gonna bribe you with some footage and photos to hopefully keep it a bit more interesting than it would be just looking at my face for 10 minutes. Right, a little while back, I was reunited with this camera, which I may or may not have mentioned on this channel before, but this is the camera that Emily got me for my 18th birthday many moons ago. And I used it for a few years. Took it to various different places in the US, Central America, here at home. Absolutely loved this thing. And uh, eventually it went to my granddad and sadly he died a couple of years ago and it's made its way back to me. And I was looking at this camera a couple of weeks back and maybe at some point I'll make some videos with this camera, but I couldn't help but notice the, uh, the 10 megapixels. Put there as a sort of resolution boast. And that is not uncommon for cameras at this time, but uh, it got me thinking a little bit more about image quality. And more specifically, what I wanna talk about is image quality versus quality images, which when we think about it, are two very distinct things. Uh, the trouble is when we don't think about it, we get sort of sucked into this idea that they're entwined by the photography industry and the evil camera manufacturers that would want us to think that they're the same thing. Although less so the case nowadays, and we get on to that. Well, this is kind of amazing. So this is Yan Mayen. And uh, what a lovely day to get to explore it. It's uh, partly a military base, partly a meteorological research center, I think, and partly just the most unbelievable landscape I've ever seen. Black, volcanic, moody, lovely. Oh! This is kind of nice, bit of driftwood. instances where modern camera technology is making new kinds of photos possible. I'm thinking of things like wildlife photography, sports photography, astrophotography maybe, but for the first two at least, things like big buffers, uh, fast shooting rates, super reliable and sticky autofocus, those things undoubtedly are helping us capture better photos now than ever before. I definitely get that. But generally speaking, outside of that, I think it's pretty clear that photos don't need to have amazing modern image quality to be quality images. And I know that because I've got a host of books behind me to prove it. And you can look at images from Fred Herzog that were taken 60 years ago and look amazing. Or you can look at photos from Joel Meyerowitz taken 30, 40 years ago. Photos from Alex Webb taken 20 or 30 years ago. And of course there are plenty of examples where you can look at much more recent work such as Martin Doulard's book, 
and I've definitely butchered his name there. But absolutely check out his YouTube channel if you haven't already, he's building a house in Italy. It's amazing. But he's got a book from his two years on a bike where he cycled from Canada, I think, down to Patagonia. And if I'm not mistaken, all the photos were taken on a Panasonic GH6, which isn't even really a photography camera. And that book, I think, has some of the best imagery I've seen in any book to date. And all of these works are fantastic examples of photos that don't lean on image quality for their notoriety. You know, these are not photos that are great because they're edge to edge sharp. They're not great photos because of dynamic range. They're not great because they're free of noise or grain. And they're not great because of all the shadow detail that's been recovered. But they're great because they're visual stories that prod us to make us think and feel things. Uh, but the problem is that if you're anything like me, you rarely think about this. Because thanks to people like me, and actually me in many cases, we're often bombarded with specs and full frame this and AI denoise that. And a lot of the time we end up talking about these things much more than we talk about what actually constitutes quality work. Then like I say, it's, it's down to people like me a lot of the time. I should say actually, as I pepper this video with the photos and footage from Yan Mayen, I'm not doing so because I consider that quality work. It's just that I do, I do worry you'll get sick of my face. Oh, wow. Green moss, track, mountains and birds in the background. What's not to like? Now, image quality, as far as I can tell, certainly as it relates to the real world, is stagnating massively. And you can tell this because manufacturers talk an awful lot less about image quality than they used to. And now with new cameras, they talk much more about video features, about screens that can flip all kinds of different ways, about autofocus, about in-body stabilization, about different kinds of shutters, about USB connectivity, EVF resolution, I could go on. But now more than ever, I think, cameras are coming out with basically the same image quality as the camera that came before them. Because I reckon that basically what we're doing now as photographers is driving around in these specced up Land Rovers and Toyota Land Cruisers on the world's smoothest roads. Uh, that's an analogy, quite a bad one. But what I mean to say is that as photographers now, we are over-equipped for what we need. All the time, pretty much. Most of us, definitely me. Now, I've been doing this for long enough to know that when I put a Q&A up on Instagram, for instance, the most common questions will be about gear and the gear that I used for specific photos. And I've seen enough people shocked when I tell them that I used a Micro Four Thirds camera with 16 megapixels for a particular photo to know that there is a big disconnect between how much a camera matters and how much people think a camera matters. And if you watch the last video, you'll know that I'm super annoyed at myself for buying the Sony a7R Mark V. And it's for this reason. The difference between a photo from this and a photo from a little Ricoh GR is negligible. Although those Ricohs aren't, aren't weather sealed, which wouldn't have worked in Yan Mayan. Well, I think that is about as close to my kind of scene as it's possible to get. Man-made stuff and just the best of nature. That mountain top is crazy. Uh, so in short, and really the point of this video, is to say that I don't think there's really much more to be eked out of image quality, uh, certainly in the real world. I mean, I'm sure that in a few years time, we'll be served cameras that have 300 megapixels and uh, inbuilt AI denoise features that process super quickly so you never see noise ever again. And that will present us with lots more perfect images, but will they be better images? I don't know, because as I said at the top, a good photo is not reliant on the image quality. And if you have a photo that is reliant on image quality and only works because of the image quality, that photo will only be notable so long as that image quality is notable. Anyway, I say all that to say that all I know is that outside of things like wildlife and sports photography where, yeah, critical autofocus that's fast and reliable is super helpful as well as a host of other features that I've mentioned. For the most part, us photographers have never really been able to blame our gear. And that has never been truer than now. Then again, the world, forums, YouTube videos such as mine will probably continue to sleepwalk into this constant talking about image quality. And mostly I think 
because image quality can be bought. Quality images can't, really, I don't think. Anyway, on that cheery note, thank you for watching and a big thank you to this week's sponsor, Squarespace. And I've done what has become one of my favourite things to do, which is to put all the photos from this video onto a page on my website and I've sequenced them exactly as I want to to pull together a bit of a story from our short time on Yan Mayen. And thanks to Squarespace, it took me about 20 minutes and it's all drag and drop. Squarespace takes care of all the resizing and adding text and captions, all that kind of stuff it's a breeze. And as I say in pretty much every video, I highly recommend getting yourself a website if you're a photographer, because it's a fantastic place to host a portfolio. Now, not just for other people to see your work, but for you to be able to sequence your work and keep an eye on it yourself. And of course, you can also use Squarespace to have an online store, a blog, newsletters, or to schedule appointments if you run online workshops, that kind of thing. But whatever you use it for, I think Squarespace has tools that are invaluable to all photographers. Uh, so if you'd like to check it out for free, you can go to squarespace.com to start a free trial. And after that, if you'd like to make a purchase, just go to squarespace.com forward slash James and you'll get 10% off that first purchase. And a big thank you to Squarespace for their continued support. And thank you to you for watching. Hopefully this was um, fairly useful, enjoyable. Hopefully the photos helped. Also, I've just noticed I've got toothpaste on my t-shirt again. Not mine, it's from my son who's got a habit of nestling his mouth into my um, my shoulder every time we finish cleaning his teeth, covered in toothpaste. It's adorable.